Good day everyone, my name is Leanne, I'm a reggae set pharmacist in South Africa and today I wanted to talk about a subject that is very um, bitter to talk about and that is dispensing errors. Dispensing errors do happen, um, I've made some myself and I know some pharmacists have made some and it's not nice but unfortunately it does happen so the only way that we can you know take this on and prevent it is to have a plan and to like think it through and not blame ourselves but see as look at the environment as a whole everything that contributes to dispensing errors happening and be the best version of ourselves by constantly checking ourselves and like tuning into what we know double checking you never can check too much if you're working slow slow is the way to go in a pharmacy okay let's quickly discuss some examples that happened in real life so risperidone was given instead of rivetrol luckily the patient saw it she came back she asked what is this my my child with cerebral palsy has never taken this drug and we were able to identify the error and we could help her okay the other error that was made is urizone instead of urispas. Now urizone is an antibiotic. It has to be taken immediately, only one sachet. It's very important that it's been taken as soon as possible. Okay, Where urispas is just symptomatic treatment of bladder infection. So they look similar. They live together on the same shelf next to each other. The names are similar. It happened once. Also patient came back, said she doesn't understand the instructions because on the urispas, it's instructed to dissolve in water and um, it's tablets. She's not able to dissolve them. So yeah, she came back. We gave her the correct thing. It was yeah, it was a mess. Then myelin oxybutynin was given, um, was changed with myelin alprazolam, and the patient was kind of went into a coma. She was very central depressed for a while. So that was a quite shocking one. Um, I can just imagine the threat. That it can give you um, if you <laughs> if a patient calls and says well maybe my mother also has been taking this medication and she's not well and you check and she comes with the container and you're like oh no I should have given myelin oxybutynin for bladder and not myelin alprazolam which is essential nervous depressor okay then the wrong strength of attraction was given to someone in my family once by a very old experienced like community pharmacist loved by everyone and so it was, altroxin is live levothyroxine for the treatment of hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism. So yes, my uncle just felt very sick and he didn't get any better. So he contacted the doctor and the doctor's like, this is impossible. We calculated your dose. It should be correct. And he said, come and visit me and bring me the container. And then they realized the wrong strength of altroxin has been on a, loaded on a repeat script, repeat basis, and it's been giving it getting it like that every month okay the last one i just quickly wanted to say is that a pediatric patient overdosed on epilim the pharmacist dispensed what was written on the prescription and the patients came back and they said their child was very sleepy and so it turned out the pharmacist and the doctor went to the hearing and yeah so they it happens guys so you don't always check um especially like this pharmacist was new in the pharmacy maybe a first month and yeah so it's things that happened i know about it it happened next to me it happened some of them happened under my watch so i i just mentioned this to you maybe to give you insights on where to look out for errors that might happen and you know to have to get into a habit of being rather over checking and being rather safe safer um, then you having to be sorry at the end of the day okay now what happens when what goes through your mind when you just discover that you've done a dispensing error has a major impact you have to report it you have to fill in forms patients are there upset your boss is upset maybe your RP whatever that part that that happens inside of you the self-talk part that happens inside your brain it's very important it's gonna help you to in your career as a pharmacist onwards 
how to handle things stressful like this and mistakes better. So it's okay to feel bad. But you feel bad and then you get over that feeling and you focus on what you have learned from the situation. You write, for me it works on to write down what happened. I write on everything that could have caused it. I write on where I could have been wrong or when someone else could have been wrong. Um, I write on everything. I write the lighting was bad, the airflow was bad in the pharmacy, um, the, the people were very loud. Um, things like that. So just to get a perspective of the bigger picture because it's not always even if the mistake happened under your watch It's not only you that has the influence on the mistakes you make. It's your environment It's a lot of other things other than only the person that's signing that script. Okay, for example the Risperidone and the Rivetrol one the, the um, Assistant picked it wrongly. Okay, so it was checked but it was picked wrongly and then we saw like the day after that, again, that, that same assistant is picking the incorrect medication. So then we had a talk with the assistant and yeah, that's just to give you an example of how, yes, it's you, check the script, but if your assistant could, you know, be correct, picked correctly from the start, it might not have happened. Okay, then you formulate a personal plan to prevent mistakes. So my plan is... Be thorough, be accurate and have a consistent pace. And that's how I work the fastest. If I try to hurry up or I try to speedy through the script, I make mistakes, I have to redo it. I'm Even a second time, I'm even quicker. I would just quickly want to fix the mistake and make another mistake, I have to redo it. If I go from the beginning, slowly, steadily, thoroughly, I only do it once, it's correct, I can put it aside, my job is done. Okay. Or... I give the patients the accurate amount of medication, accurate dose, accurate um, trade name. There's no coming backs or dispensing errors make because that takes up time. Being quick in the pharmacy is not difficult. Anyone can just rush through a script. But it's being thorough and being consistent with your pace that makes you the ultimate fastest, if that is what you are aiming for. But Accuracy is always more important than speed. Okay, let me quickly touch on a few factors that might contribute to you or someone in your pharmacy making a dispensing error. So definitely the lights. If it's poorly lit, you get more sleepy easily. <laughs> and if the airflow is bad, it's, it has an influence. They have done studies about this. It's important to have adequate lighting in your pharmacy. Have adequate, if you don't have windows, Make sure the aircon is running. It shouldn't be too hot. It shouldn't be too cold. Things as simple as that. I mean, if I can do something as um, just monitor my air conditioner or, you know, just check that all the lights are working all the time, I will definitely do that if I can prevent dispensing errors from happening. Um, a busy pace. Some retail pharmacies, especially even outpatient hospital pharmacies, always a rush. There's always patients waiting. There's always a queue. You know what? It's okay. Um... If you are slow but you are thorough, you're going to be the fastest. Okay, so busy pharmacy, yes, mistakes are more, more prone to happen. But here's where you have to get a mindset of, even though it's busy around me, I'm calm, I'm confident, I'm in control with my work. Focus on what you are doing. Okay, long working hours, it does have an influence. Um, I would say for me, not really making dispensing errors, but... As I, as I face the end of the day, I would rather put, maybe I have to load a script for a patient or check a script of a, of a um, uh, assistant that's been picked, like she's going to collect you tomorrow, the patient. I'll put that script aside if it's the last hour of my working day and I'll check it tomorrow. Not because I'm lazy, not because I want to postpone or because I want it to be checked accurately. And I know in the mornings, I do my best. Okay, so even... We prepare some medication in advance for our patients. I will do those things as soon as I get there. I want to get all of those big chronic scripts out while I'm still fresh and my mind is still, you know, bright. Um, so long hours. If you're working long hours, try to do the most intensive work in the beginning of your shift. New staff, they don't always know they are un uncertain. Um, that causes sometimes confusions. Absent staff, if you are short on staff, it definitely adds to the stress. And then lastly, references. 
Um, how comfortable are you using your references? What references are available to you in the pharmacy? Because if we get stuck at a crossroad, we have to um, lean forward a reference. It's either the pharmacist next to you or it's an app on your phone or it's a book on your shelf. But get comfortable with using the reference and I wouldn't always recommend you only using your pharmacist next to you. Yes, get a second opinion, but check something in literature that can cover your butt when something bad happens. So that's a few of the things that I've seen in my career as a pharmacist that contribute to dispensing errors. And ultimately I can say it's going to happen some way. You're going to make an error. You Nobody's perfect. But it's not about the error that you make. It's how you handle the error and what you learn from it. That's more important. There you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or you want to suggestions, please leave it for me in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you guys. Um, that's all from my side. Have a great week.